cannot imagine a worse idea. Guys, this can be really catastrophic if you forget it. To avoid these situations when you cannot see an artwork, you know, a masterpiece by Michelangelo or Botticelli or someone. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Dramatically Expatic. And spring has sprung. The weather is awesome here in Italy now, but summer is coming soon. And I hope that you're already planning your summer vacations in Italy because it's a really, really good time to visit this country, even though it gets quite hot here. Anyway, there are a few tips that if you know them, they will make your holiday in Italy a literal dream, even during the hot summer months. And these are the tips that I wanted to share with you today. Now, before we begin, guys, if you're new here, I remind you to subscribe and hit the bell button down below so you don't miss anything new. And if you've been here for a while and you find my videos useful, the best way to support my channel is by hitting the thanks button that is located down there near the like button. And if you're ready, guys, we can jump right into the video. The thing number one that you should absolutely consider before visiting Italy in summer is, of course, the weather. Now, the weather depends hugely on when you're visiting and what part of Italy. Uh, it depends, you know, whether you're going to the north or to the south. But anyway, I would say that summers tend to be hot and humid here. August is probably the worst month to visit Italy because A, it's yeah, hot and humid and B, most of Italians are on vacations as well, meaning that the roads, the beaches, the hotels and restaurants get quite busy. And while it may seem like you cannot imagine a worse idea than exploring the Italian cities during August, you still can do it. Trust me, I've roamed Italian cities, big Italian cities like Venice, for example, in August, and it was doable, although very, very hot. So you can definitely adjust your holiday and yeah, you can still do it. But if possible, if you haven't planned your holiday yet, I would personally recommend you to opt for June or September or even July. However, if you have already planned your holiday for August, do not worry, it's still doable, you'll still enjoy it, but maybe try to stick to the seaside or, you know, more like natural areas where it should be a little bit cooler. Next up, a few things to consider when packing for Italy. Obviously, you'd want to pack all kinds of stuff because, you know, the days are very hot and humid, but also in the evenings it might get a little bit cooler, so having a light jacket or something like that would be a good idea. And anyway, if you manage to pack natural materials, it's always a good idea, it's always better to spend your days in this hot weather wearing something light and natural and always, always, always pack a sunscreen. Guys, this can be really catastrophic if you forget it, because sun is savage here. You should use your sunscreen daily, trust me, it is absolutely mandatory, especially if you want to avoid spoiling your holiday with a sunburn and, you know, just walking around being all red and sunburned is not very nice <laughs> and it definitely is not a pleasant sensation. Uh, and guys, get yourself something light to cover yourself up. First of all, because of the sun. I mean, you will obviously want to wear something with short sleeves because it's hot, but try to have something light to, with long sleeves because uh, it may give you an added protection from the sun, but also you will need it to enter the numerous Italian churches because you are not allowed to enter the church with your uh, shoulders and legs uh, uncovered. So you will have to, to wear something or to put on something if you want to visit them. And you will want to visit them most likely because they conserve numerous, numerous artworks. So I would recommend you to at least have something like a lightweight scarf or something like that. So you can just cover yourself up briefly for a visit and then you can go outside. Some churches will allow you inside without telling you anything and some will not. So to avoid these situations when you cannot see an artwork, you know, a masterpiece by Michelangelo or Botticelli or someone of their caliber, you should have something to cover yourself up. 
Speaking of the Italian churches with their numerous artworks, I have a dedicated post on my Patreon page where I talk about all these different masterpieces that you can see for free in many cases. So guys, if you want to learn more about it and also to get numerous itineraries, customizable itineraries and best deals, best hotels, best tips on how to travel Italy and much, much more, check out the link in the description box. I post regular weekly updates to my Patreon page and there you can find a lot of useful information for traveling or even moving to Italy. So once again, I remind you to check the link in the description box and subscribe and I will be so, so happy to welcome you there. Now guys, when planning a trip to Italy, you might be wondering what the best destination would be for you. Obviously, it depends on you hugely and on your preferences. However, I would say that there is something for everybody in Italy, even during the hot summer months. If you're wondering about how difficult it would be to explore the Italian cities during summer, I would say that it is okay. I mean, yes, it obviously is hot and exploring the streets in the heat might not be as pleasant. However, luckily, most museums have the AC. So if you plan your trip, wisely and if you plan your day strategically you can avoid the heat by staying indoors during the hottest hours by planning a museum visit or something like that and then maybe enjoying the city with a glass of uh, something cold during the evening hours aperitivo would be perfect because the weather would be cooler by then and you can enjoy the city and enjoy you know, a nice walk and a bit of tea afterwards. However, if you're more into natural uh, sites and if you want to have a holiday by the sea or something, you know, somewhere in the nature, I have a few recommendations for you. However, I am planning actually a video dedicated to the best seaside destinations in Italy. So stay tuned. And once again, I remind you to subscribe if you haven't yet, so you don't miss this video when it comes up. However, speaking here about the best beach destinations, I would say that my personal favorite is the Liguria region. I love it. You get the views, you get the great food, you get the sea. The sea is absolutely incredible there. And you also get all these wonderful, nice little towns to explore there. I will leave you a link up here to my Ligurian playlist if you haven't seen it yet. So you can check it out with Cinque Terre and a few other famous destinations, guys. I love it absolutely, but also stay tuned for another video where I talk about more different destinations at the seaside. But if you're more into the mountains and the mountain holiday, I couldn't recommend you enough visiting the Lake Garda. Lake Garda is an absolute paradise. It's one of my favorite places in Italy, absolutely. And I also have a dedicated playlist. I will leave you a link up here. You get the most beautiful lake with incredible views, hiking trails, uh, mountain bike trails, lots of activities there, especially if you love an active holiday, but also if you want just a relaxing day at the beach, it's also perfect. So check it out, guys. and. You know, my heart belongs to these two destinations when it comes to these more relaxed and natural sites, you know, and holiday destinations for summer in Italy. The sun's out, guys, now for this uh, special summary uh, video of mine. So sorry for this light change. Anyway, when it comes to accommodation, because the next thing I want to talk about is accommodation, it obviously boils down to your uh, preferences and your needs because everybody is different and you know, it's really hard to advise you something because I don't know what would you like and where would you like to stay, but there is one very peculiar type of accommodation that I couldn't recommend to you enough. And it's called an agriturismo. Agriturismo are usually these uh, small locally owned uh, businesses like uh, B&Bs or guest houses that are usually surrounded by nature. In a place like this, for example, you can usually find an agriturismo and uh, there is often some kind of a local production happening right there. It could be a farm or a winery, for example. And, you know, what could be a better idea for summer vacation in Italy? Staying in the nature, in this uh, local authentic place with usually the host that will be very involved into your holiday and into your stay. I mean that they will really care about your stay. You know, they will be usually very helpful and willing to help you, willing to advise you on where to go and what to explore nearby and willing to make your stay as special as 
possible and it will be in you know, this home style stay that is absolutely special the most authentic experience is guaranteed to you guys so check out the agriturismos wherever you go and trust me you will not regret it my next tip concerns traveling and moving around italy and honestly if you plan on visiting multiple locations i would 100% recommend you taking the Italo train. The Italo train is this high-speed train that is super comfortable and super fast and it always has an AC in summer, so it is a perfect a way to travel Italy during hot summer months. This is most definitely not sponsored, but Italy, if you're watching this and if you're into collaborating with me, let me know because I'm a huge fan of yours. Also guys, I have a dedicated video about traveling Italy by train. I released it last week basically, and I will leave you a link up here if you haven't seen it. It's very, very helpful if you're planning to travel here and to move by trains because I cover all the essentials. This is kind of a basic knowledge, but it is also essential knowledge, the things that you should absolutely know if you plan on taking trains while being here on your holiday. Otherwise, you know, you can just rent a car or maybe even drive here. And driving in Italy is actually quite efficient, maybe unless it's August and everyone else is driving as well. So the roads can get pretty busy in August. But other than that, I would say that driving in Italy allows you to experience this very small villages and towns and remote destinations where trains don't go usually which is actually quite cool because you know you can experience these very authentic places that not many tourists get to see so driving here is also a good idea especially during summer because you can also uh, travel between different beaches and between different natural reserves and you know explore just uh, Italy from a different perspective. Also, if you plan on driving here, I also have a dedicated video about some peculiarities of driving in Italy, so I will leave you a link up here as well. Check it out. I have lots of useful tips for you guys. Next up, guys, let's chat about food. While Italian cuisine is absolutely superior all year round, let's just all agree on that, right? Summer is wonderful time to experience the best of the Italian cuisine because first of all guys you get all this sweet goodness here like gelato for example honestly I've never been a huge fan of ice cream before moving to Italy I never really liked it and in fact gelato and ice cream are two very distinct things actually but gelato here is a real masterpiece it's a culinary masterpiece that you have to try when you're here guys so if you haven't tried the Italian gelato authentic Italian gelato in Italy put it on your bucket list for this summer another and less obvious thing to try in Italy during summer is granita granita is this uh, you know uh, it's somewhere in the middle between a dessert and a sweet drink so it's, it's slightly related to sorbet just better and it's made of water with ice and different flavors you Usually fruity ones but you can even find granita with coffee so there is definitely room for creativity it's perfect for hot days and it's perfect you know to just cool down a little bit and it could be an alternative to gelato or why not you can get a gelato and then a granita which would be absolutely perfect so take note guys and make sure to try granita this summer if you're visiting Italy and obviously Another thing that might be even more obvious, but it should never, never be underestimated to try during summer here, all the seasonal vegetables and fruits, because guys, I mean, we are in Italy, obviously. If you're a fan of cherries and peaches, melons, watermelons, all this summery goodness, Italy is full of these amazing fruits and vegetables and things that you can try, guys, all of this produce is locally grown and organic and you know it's it's just, the quality is just superior i can talk about the italian products you know forever probably because they're just so so good and summer is perfect season to try them all so enjoy your summer holiday with the best food possible and that's it for today guys i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope that these tips were useful for you and they will be useful for you if you're planning your summer holiday in italy i hope that you will enjoy your trips wherever you're going and especially if you're going to italy so guys once again i remind you to subscribe if you haven't yet if you're new here because 
I post regular travel vlogs and this kind of videos where I share my best tips for you. If you love Italy, if you plan on moving here, or if you love traveling here, trust me, you will not want to miss anything new. And as always, don't forget to like, comment and share this video with your friends so I can make even more videos like this for you. Thank you guys so much for being here and please enjoy your day.